You are listening to Tangents on Everything and Nothing, a show where we talk about everything and nothing. Hello and welcome to Tangents on Everything and Nothing. Um, I'm your host, John Simon. Let's see if I can get myself in the camera a little more better. Uh, to, with me is Tom Rice. He's, uh, are you just the sole owner? or My wife and I. Uh, of Nate's Candy Jar. Nobody knows about Nate's Candy Jar. They're a wonderful candy factory making some of the best fudge around. Uh, fudge is available, what, as far as Florida? We sell it all over the country. There's stores all over the country now. So that's fantastic. Uh, don't ask me to which which store though. Why not? <laughs> but, <laughs> but almost every almost every state has one or two um, uh, merchants that are selling our product. Excellent. So. And uh, they're in a small town called Gosport, Indiana, and they run out of a what? Just a. Little... It's we have a retail location, mm-hmm. and it started out as an old school candy store. Um, my wife actually wanted to recreate the feel of a candy store. Mm-hmm. That she, you know, grew up in. She yeah. grew up in Gosport, and the the idea was, uh, when she was young, she could go in with a quarter and buy all sorts of candy, and she wanted to to recreate the feel of that for mm-hmm. kids today. You know, in, in this time, to be able to come in with limited funds, buy some candy, <laughs> have some fun, and uh, it just kind of grew out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had to evolve several different ways mm-hmm. over the years. I would have to say that the initial concept was definitely a success because I remember walking in there and feeling like a kid again, getting a string of zots and opening those things and all the different candies you have in there. You know, I I don't think my wife realized how uplifting Mm -hmm. owning a candy store was. She she had owned a couple of other businesses over the years, Mm -hmm. and I had worked different jobs over the years, but like everybody is happy when they come into Mm -hmm. a store. You don't have to drag a kid into a candy store yeah <laughs> no. come on we're going to the candy store drag them out, and they're not saying mom mom no mm-hmm. they're yeah. they're they're pulling their parents in yeah. and uh, it's just a it's a fun location or it's mm-hmm. a fun uh niche to be in excellent and you just recently got access to selling at the iu games yeah, yeah. um this is so uh about five years ago we my wife designed fudge in a cup but she changed mm-hmm. the packaging for our fudge and it's funny how one little one little change can just can dramatically affect your business. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had been selling in the traditional way of, you know, you cut cut slabs of fudge and, you know, you sell it at um, county fairs mm-hmm. or different events. Um, and we were selling in over in Monroe County at the Monroe County Fair, and it was like 89 degrees. And we're trying to sell fudge. And after 73, 74 degrees, it is hard to maintain fudge. <laughs> the presentation just kind of slides. And you, you're, you know, she's looking at that and she's going, there's just got to be a better way to mm-hmm. sell fudge. And she thought about it and uh, came up with the idea of creating something called fudge in a cup, mm-hmm. which is just a little cup. And we've, d- we've got a spoon that's included in it. It's got mm-hmm. a little lid so you can have a bite, put the lid back on. Just a cleaner way of... of mm-hmm eating fudge if you're out at an event well this changed our our whole concept because other stores were able to retail fudge Mm -hmm. through us like that it was a clean clean friendly way for them to get into the the fudge retail niche Mm -hmm. without having to have someone there to cut the fudge and Mm -hmm. you know it, it didn't require any presence or any labor on their part they just bought it from us and so we started wholesaling and that's that's kind of how we just grew and so our store today the actual retail front is is pretty small Mm -hmm. and then the rest of it is we've even put a little wall up uh the rest of it is about manufacturing fudge in a cup for wholesale Mm -hmm. so that's um kind of how we got into uh, iu two years ago um the uh, the director for athletic dining gave us an opportunity to be in the concession stands at iu so he actually took our countertop displays and put them in every concession stand for IU football and basketball. Last year with the pandemic, they didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And then this year, uh, this year they were still being a little conservative. They weren't going to place us in the, um, 
concession stands, but um, we had picked up a nut roasting um, mm -hmm. machine, and my wife said, you know, why don't you give them a call and see if they'd be interested in having some roasted nuts at the game. Maybe we could have a booth. Well, my my timing, I guess, on this was just perfect because as I sent him an email saying, do you have a booth maybe we could rent, mm -hmm. he was actually getting a list together of restaurants um, to contact for a booth that had opened up right then. He <laughs> said, if you'd, if you'd talk to me three or four hours later, it would have been too late. It just happened to be. And so he's like, you know, we don't do roasted nuts. You already do the fudge in a cup. Why don't you just use this booth, have a booth, and, um, you know, you can sell all of it. So, you know, bring over different mm -hmm. products. So we've, we've actually used this as an opportunity to sell our fudge in a cup, our caramels, roasted nuts, and taffy all in a booth called the Candy Stripe Cafe at court mm -hmm. level for IU men's and women's basketball. And it's turning out great. We've we've done three of them now, <laughs> and that first time we were a little nervous. We mm -hmm. I think we were there, I think we were there five hours early, you know, before the game because we were like we got to get you know got to be prepared, got to be prepared. Yeah. And so you know we were prepared and then waiting for four hours, you know. So <laughs> the, excellent, but it went well. That sounds yes, big. it did. It great. did. Um, and it's the sort of thing where it's really hard to judge. We haven't ever done anything like that that kind of an environment with kind of a candy store theme. Mm -hmm. uh, we limited the number of products, but still there's enough there of a variety that, you know, it's interesting to see what's going to sell and what isn't. It's it's yeah. going to take a little while for people to get used to us being there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't see them allowing you to store too much there. So it is, I, I do see a limited uh, menu, yeah. but yeah. the fact that you're going to have the roasted nuts, something I haven't seen at games in a long time. Yeah. And yeah. so we've got uh, cashews, almonds, and pecans, mm. and uh, we just we roast them, and it's just it works out really well. So, Excellent. Um, we hadn't really anticipated doing this. I know we sent a, an email over, but mm -hmm. like he he called me, like I just <laughs> I sent the email, and he called and said, "Okay, can you come over right now?" And so I'm like, <laughs> I really was, I, you know, I was thinking, hey, we negotiate and talk and maybe, you know, in six months we'd do something. Yeah. But it was like three hours later, I was over in his office talking about so They this. were ready to go right they, there. They now. literally were, didn't want to waste. <laughs> so the other side to IU is, and, and in many ways it's larger, is we sell to the um, residential dining mm -hmm. side as well. So you've got athletic dining and residential dining. Residential is all of the dorms. So we're we're in the convenience stores for the different dorms as well, and they, the students there, just they love like the cookies and cream. We just sell so much, so many cookies and cream, oh, yeah. cups of fudge there. It's just it's uh, it's been a real blessing as far as uh, just IU in mm -hmm. itself is is at the point where it's giving us a little stability, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for our way back. Our business model really got. Well, we really got into uh, trouble with the pandemic. It hit us hard because half of half of our business was uh, going to shows. We would do 35 shows a year in about a 300-mile radius. So um, we would be in, in Michigan or Illinois or all over Indiana at a, different events. Mm. Um, and the other half of the business was the wholesale. And then we had a small amount of retail there in Gosport. Mm -hmm. There's only 850 people in town. Yeah. So, you know, the, the retail side is, is pretty limited unless people from Bloomington and Spencer and Martinsville come, come and find us. Mm -hmm. um, when the pandemic hit, I think 2020, we did four shows instead of mm -hmm. 30 or 35. Oh, man. So it, it, really, um, it really knocked us down. I think February 2020 was our best month we'd ever had. And mm -hmm. March 2020 was the worst month we'd ever had. Oh, man. It just fell off a cliff, you know? Yeah. Um, I will admit, I've, I've sent people in your direction. Uh, I have guests come through a lot, and they want to know something about the area. And it's like, if you want some good candy, you got to go here. So I, it's 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 a tie between Nate's Candy Jar and Civilian is the places, places around here I talk about the right. most. So. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, uh, I, I really appreciate that. We get a lot of people in for the first time. You know, it's people that are just coming into the area and coming in to visit. Um, or we've we've had a lot of just 
this community is really good at trying to forward customers to yep. other people. I know uh, in Gosport, it's always kind of funny, just down the street is um, a uh, store called The Crazy Lady Next Door. And so yep. mm -hmm. I always say, you know, people have come into my mm -hmm. my shop and after, at the end I, I always say, now make sure to go visit The Crazy Lady mm -hmm. next door. And I'm like, that that's the name of her shop. I'm not calling her a crazy yeah, and lady. And that's right next to, was it uh, Penguin? Or yeah, Penguin, Penguin, Penguin Cycle Penguin Works. Cycle Works, yeah. yeah. Uh, we go through him uh, for some stuff, uh, skateboard accessories. Uh, my son's trying to get his bike fixed and found out it was too small. So, but yeah, we we we. He's we, a great we, guy, yep. and uh, Mike. That's Mike and Lorna Miller. Mm -hmm. Trying to and, get them on the show too. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay, well that that would be good. You know, um, that was for Mike. That was a heck of a a risk, I think, um, mm -hmm. for them to have a a bicycle shop of that caliber. Right. In Gosport, where yeah. there's only 850 people, mm -hmm. you know, you know, because you, you've really got to pull people in from the region, right. you know, and I think he does that just through um, the strength of his um, ability and skill. You know, yeah. He, oh, yeah. people people from around the region go to him because they know he'll fix their bike really well. He'll, he'll do it the it right. right way. And he, he doesn't take actually, shortcuts. No, he doesn't. He's actually... I would say significantly cheaper than a lot of the other high-end retailers in Bloomington. So he does wow. get a lot of the students come in. Wow. Hopefully more. But, yeah, I, yeah. I like it that he's local and Attitude. really accessible. Yep. But we, we try to, um, you know, and I know they've sent, I've had people arrive from, mm -hmm. from them that they've sent down to ours. So <laughs> that's like whenever you find a customer, it's like send them to, yeah. send them somewhere, yep. you know, to, to somewhere around the community. Yeah. So Well, on that note, uh both Spencer and Gosport seem to be having a really good revival in their downtown and uh, we'll call it commerce areas. Uh, I think so. Do you know of any of the plans that are going on in Gosport? I really, um, I don't know of any any plans right now. But what's interesting about Gosport is for years it seemed like somebody would have a great idea and they would buy a building and they would put everything into or they would rent a space. Mm -hmm. They would put everything they had into making a go of it. And, you know, two years later, they ran out of money, so they quit. And about the time they quit, somebody else started. And it was <laughs> never like a coordinated effort mm -hmm. of, hey, there's all these empty buildings. Let's all just do something now. And, um, you know, right now you're getting a lot more activity. Mm -hmm. You've got a um, an Amish bakery that came in where the hardware store used to be. Really? I, I did not know about that yeah, one. Yeah, okay. and that's brought a lot of traffic in. Nice. Um, they, they're, they're killing me with some of their cookies that they sell. <laughs> there's a, there's a, uh, this old molasses ginger cookie that they make that I mm -hmm. bought this six pack and I thought, well, I'll have, I'll have one and then I'll take the rest home to my wife. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in my, my candy store and the next thing you know, I've eaten all six candy, all six cookies. And I'm like, well, my wife's not going to know about, <laughs> about that package. She's not listening, you know, is she? Probably not. <laughs> she might hear this down the road, but. Yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely um, send you a link once this is available. Okay, so. but that's you know, so you've got that, and that's really good. They're mm -hmm. they they've got great pies and different you know cookies and stuff, and mm -hmm. it's not really they do have fudge, but it's not really competitive to us. A mm -hmm. lot of our business is based off of wholesale, and and um, you know doing shows. We're mm -hmm. still getting back into to yeah. shows and such, and then we have a smaller retail presence, so we're still. People who like our fudge are coming to Gosport for us anyway. They're mm -hmm. not not buying from them, but at the same time, they're pulling in more traffic. And mm -hmm. so, and then on the other side, you've got Mike and Lorna with their shops. Yep. And down the road, there's some activity. I'm not sure exactly what's going to end up, but mm -hmm. closer to the uh, the VFW, there's another building that's being renovated. So. Excellent. So we've yeah. got a few things going on. Yeah, I like seeing these these. When I first moved out here uh, in '06 downtown spencer was all but dead Tivoli yeah. wasn't was in shambles um there was really just a couple of law firms and the and offices yeah, on the square it. yeah yeah it's amazing yeah. this this is really you you know on the west side you've got of spencer you've got the dragonfly gallery which i've sent people to mm -hmm. um especially like we get a lot of people from mccormick's creek they're coming down to camp and mm -hmm. they're looking for things to do I will send them to the Dragonfly because 
it's just a very unique shop. They've oh, got a lot yeah. of they've got yeah. a lot of really cool stuff. So yep. I'll send them to you know the crazy lady next door, and if they're camping out and doing biking stuff, I'll mention mm -hmm. Mike, and then for Spencer, I'll mention that, and a couple different places to to eat and such. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, I've been to Main Street lately. Main Street Coffee, yes. Yeah. Oh, they're. They're, that's another company that's killing me. Their yeah. they, their food is so good. <laughs> I had the best. You know, you wouldn't think someone could make a grilled cheese sandwich taste as good as what I experienced. It was mm -hmm. like an experience. It wasn't really just a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> it was, and I, I'm sure I'm still not sure what kind of like a jelly that they included mm -hmm. in there. But it was, it's just, just great food. Yeah. And it's with their dishes. You know, every dish that they have is you just get the impression that it's special like it's mm -hmm. really they don't just say you know here's a hamburger or right. here's that it's really well thought out and and built yeah. and uh they you can practically a, watch them make it too yeah. right there yeah and it, that that is the um epitome of a, a family-owned business because mm -hmm. it's their family is the whole the whole group is there. Was it their, their and, nine-year-old daughter will, will, will uh, come bring your, your their stuff to you <laughs> yeah i mean they, they've got it you know the whole family's there and just a sweet family mm -hmm. and uh some of their act they're actually helping us out too um one of the the things that we've started to do is as far as building awareness of other um companies mm -hmm. is to try to incorporate some of their ingredients into our products mm -hmm. so for example we're really known for caramels i make an espresso caramel that Ooh. incorporates their espresso mm -hmm. so i i buy espresso from them and then I incorporate that into our recipe, and then you get a really oh. smooth tasting caramel. That's coffee. <laughs> if you like, if you like coffee, that mm. it's just a great, great tasting caramel. Okay. And then they're they're actually selling it for me. So, okay. so I, you know, I I sell espresso caramels at mm. our store. And if you go to, for example, if you go to an IU game, right now we're doing, we've got five different flavors of fudge, mm -hmm. and um, but. But the sixth flavor is um, called coffee bean, and it's it's a fudge that uses their espresso mm -hmm. as well in that fudge. And so we've got a little display, you know, artisan flavor of the week, and it's Main Street Coffee, and it has a little their logo and mm -hmm. talks about talks about that company. So we're <laughs> we're trying to build awareness of other people in the area you know, with our products. Yeah. So. And that's kind of the point of the show as well, is to try to let people know that there's other things out there. Yeah. And oddly enough, we do have a small percentage of, of our listeners are in Europe. Really? So on that note, is there any wow. chance that uh, that fudge a cup will actually be in Europe? Well, you know, um, yeah. I got a... I'm still trying to verify that this is a, a legitimate order. Mm -hmm. But there's a, there a guy on the East Coast that is wanting to purchase a lot of fudge for Greenland. And okay. I'm like, you know, it's like, I, I just don't... Well, the population of Greenland is really small. I know. Or usually, but I think yeah. they have a base or two of there. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm like a little leery of that, but he's mm -hmm. wanting to prepay. And he's very forthcoming with, mm -hmm. you know, here's my, here's my name, here's my address, mm -hmm. and here's, you know, and I'm a legitimate person. And I'm like... I've never done anything like that. I've shipped to Canada before, mm -hmm. so I, I say we're international because I've shipped to Winnipeg. Um, That's technically right. Te <laughs> technically, technically, we're international, but um, we're trying to decide whether mm -hmm. this is a legitimate order. But it, it's a nice sized order, and the guy seems very straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, I would love to see this everywhere. I do get a kick out of. Every once in a while, someone will say, hey, I'm in Florida, and they took mm -hmm. a picture of my fudge that they found <laughs> somewhere. And that's mm -hmm. that's really kind of uh, special, you know, just to, <laughs> that, that someone out there in the world just yeah. runs across your stuff. The first day, that the first game that I went to where he had put our fudge in little countertop displays in all the concession stands at, at the football games, I just walked around the outside looking at all. <laughs> it, it was so, you know, I just felt like it was so cool to yep. see They've got all these other, you know, there's Hershey's and us, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> well, that's definitely a, a sense of, uh, so. dare I say, stardom to it. Because, you know, yeah. there's something you've done out there yeah. that is in a high traffic area and is wanted. Yeah. 
And that's, you know, my wife is a very, um, she's very creative. Mm-hmm. And she comes up with these ideas. And she's got some great ideas about this. And that packaging, I think, just mm-hmm. really changed everything for us. She also came up with the idea of Fido's Fudge, which was a treat for dogs. Yep. And um, in many ways, I feel like we've had to step through more hoops bringing a dog treat to market than the fudge for humans. <laughs> I mean, the, you know, in Indiana, if you want to manufacture a treat for uh, dogs, you have to get through our state chemist. And so mm-hmm. the state chemist actually came down to Gosport and inspected our kitchen, the process, <laughs> the ingredients. Mm-hmm. He then took samples back with him and tested it in his you lab. You want to eat them, I'm sure. He tested them <laughs> in his lab, and then um, he... He told us what would go on the label on the back mm-hmm. of the box, but you know it was really um, it was kind of nice to see that initially started because we we had a little puppy and we wanted to to buy some treats for him. Mm-hmm. And we went to like a one of the box you know pet companies, yeah. and there was this whole row of imported um, dog treats, and I'm like it's. You know, we don't make dog treats in America. <laughs> you know, that doesn't seem real complicated. Mm-hmm. You know, it seems right. like we should be able to. And But it just, I don't know if it was more profitable for them to do it or what, but it was all being made in Vietnam or China or wherever. And mm-hmm. my wife's like, we can do something here. And so she she talked, she actually initially approached, approached the mm-hmm. uh, um, state chemist about if we were going to create a treat for dogs, how could we do it safely? And mm-hmm. And, and it worked out from there. So that's one of the other products that that we sell that, um, you know, she came up with. Mm. So it's very creative. Is that available anywhere else? It has been. Mm. Right now we're repackaging everything because, and I think this had to do with the pandemic, but our box manufacturer, I went to place a, mm. an order for thousands of our boxes, and they're like, we don't make that anymore. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. You know, you're you're my custom box maker. You're the only one that that mm. makes this box. And they're like, we well, don't do that style anymore. I'm sorry. Oh so, no. And I'm like, well, how about a last order? Can I do a last? Mm. And they're like, no, we can't. And mm. so I didn't really press them because I'm like, you know, pandemic. Right. You know, they're probably just trying to survive, and so yeah. they've had to cut whatever. So we're currently rebranding and 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 repackaging. So that's a few months down the road. But we okay. did have we had a chain store. That was uh, um, buying a 36-unit chain store mm-hmm. that was buying that that uh, item, and we had some other. Our best customers for our Fido's Fudge is actually other fudge shops, because mm-hmm. you, they've got their big display, you know, countertop display of their mm-hmm. fudge that they have, and they put our fudge on top for the dog. And so someone comes up to buy their fudge for themselves. And then they see this little treat for their dog, and mm-hmm. it's almost like a novelty thing. They're right. like, "Well, let's get some. Let's get that for them too." <laughs> and so they just sell them. They sell tremendous amounts of it. Excellent. And so, so that's geared more towards other fudge shops, mm-hmm. and then you know the occasional chain store. Um, Excellent. So kind of a little different um, niche than than fudge and cup. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have three dogs, so we'll have to come by and get some. Yeah, come by. <laughs> come by. I'm going down um, later this week. We've got a show in Ferdinand. Um, it's called Chris Kindlemart, and um, it's just crazy. They they bus people in from five other states mm-hmm. into this event, and I, I don't know if they're still doing that this year. They obviously canceled it last year because yeah. I think it would have been deemed a super spreader at the time. Right. Because you have, you know, 10,000 10, people from five different states, all you know, coming all together there. in one area. Yeah. yeah. So um, this year they're they're having it and we're going to go down there. But we sell a ton of Fido's Fudge there. Excellent. So we'll yeah. have we'll have a lot of that down there for them. So um, it's a great little market. Now I want to do a little backup here. Sure. What inspired fudge in general? We, we know it was the packaging that, that eventually brought you competitively into the market. Sure. But what, was it just both of you like really like making fudge a lot or? We started this, the whole, the whole company started out of a fundraiser when our kids were little. They were in elementary school, Gosport Elementary School, and they needed a fundraiser. And, um. 
we had um, there was an elderly woman in town that had um, interacted a lot with my oldest son mm. and um, he would go over there you know she would watch him and stuff sometimes and she she had this recipe for caramels that was really good and she taught him how to make caramels <laughs> well the elementary school was needing to raise funds for outdoor playground equipment mm -hmm. and he kind of suggested why don't we try to do something with this and so my wife figured out packaging and everything and, and started packaging it and we we made caramels and sold them as a part of the fundraiser so it was quite successful and after after the fundraiser was over, she started getting requests from people. Hey, could I have some more caramels? <laughs> and she realized it could turn into a side hustle. Mm -hmm. So she started making um, a couple different flavors of, of caramel and going to um, farmer's markets and such. And just it mm -hmm. became something where on a Saturday she could make a couple hundred bucks, um, you know, just yeah. to add to. Well, a few years after that, we had the opportunity to buy a building hmm. and she had always wanted to have this candy store. And so she thought, let's go for it. We'll make caramels there. And so we bought this building, we renovated the back and added on a commercial kitchen mm -hmm. so we could manufacture our caramels. And, you know, she was thinking about, you know, what do you find in candy stores? What, how else can we increase our, um, our revenue because one of the things we quickly found out was you can't just depend on having a retail store in Gosport mm -hmm. in such a, a niche like just candy. You you have to have other products and you have to reach out beyond your your immediate market. And she started researching it and just really decided that fudge would be a nice add on. Mm -hmm. Just like roasted nuts. Uh, yeah. you know the and, and I've always been She's always been like the gung ho, mm -hmm. let's just go for it kind of thing, you know, business plan, you know, <laughs> ah, let's just go for it and see mm -hmm. what happens. And I've always been kind of the reserve. Well, let's just hold on and let's just think about it. But, you know, she always has these, um, this drive mm -hmm. to try something new and to develop something. And um, she wanted to do the fudge and it just took off and mm -hmm. it, it became the sort of thing where we gradually started replacing smaller shows and farmers markets with larger shows and um, just you know we we uh, we started meeting more people who one of the other things you talk about building cross traffic mm -hmm. but when you go to these shows and you make friends with some of the other vendors you start sharing notes about well this this show is a really good show or mm -hmm. don't waste your time with this show and they start kind of helping each other mm -hmm. and as long as you're not they're not selling fudge and you're not selling fudge they're <laughs> they're willing to help you know if it's a different yeah. market mm -hmm. they're you know try this out and so gradually over time we started really developing that the um show mm -hmm. side of the the revenue and and fudge was just a natural part of that <laughs> oh, so. um <clears throat> we used to do a, a lot of shows uh, we're starting to do them again um, we do all various types of artwork. Um, I was doing metal signs for a while yeah. and we got a booth at a reptile show because usually at a reptile show, it's feed, uh, housing, the reptiles themselves, stuff that's oriented towards reptiles. Mm -hmm. Well, we came in with reptile art and wow. that kind of, I won't say we started it, but we were right there at the cusp when suddenly we went from just reptiles and supplies to more like collectibles and artwork and stuffed animals and paintings and and wow. uh so yeah we all started getting that it's like all right well you want to do this reptile show this then you go to this reptile yeah show. <laughs> right and and uh you know it's word of mouth mm -hmm. you know in many ways it's not just um people going to shows through word of mouth it's the mm -hmm. vendors themselves on the other side of the thing they're yeah. they're trading notes and they're you know it's there's very much a um, you help me, I help you, mm -hmm. and, you know, we're all kind of, yeah. um, I think sometimes there's a perception that if you have a, a niche that you're mm -hmm. working that, you know, you're doing really well. Well, the truth is most of us are just, mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to get to the next week and trying to survive oh, yeah. and try yeah. to find that one product and, um, that, uh, you know, 
the ability to help each other, mm -hmm. I think, is really it makes a difference. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. I'm pretty sure though most people are asking you to come over just so they can more of your fudge, right? <laughs> that, you know that might be a we one of the things that we did before the pandemic we gave out a lot more samples. Yeah. And that was kind of one of the ways that we would get people to come over and talk was you know try you want a free sample of our fudge and mm -hmm. they come over and it more than anything else it gave you a chance to um, talk about the fudge and mm -hmm. the fudge in a cup and how unique it is. Um, so that's. After this pandemic, it's going to be interesting to see. We've started doing shows, but we're not giving out samples, mm -hmm. so it's a little harder to initiate interest in our yeah. products. So, we'll we'll see how that goes. A well, bit of a question: I, I haven't read the label because I've but I've had several of the cups. How many servings are technically in a cup? <laughs> technically, in technically, a cup. <laughs> um, technically, I think there's two or three. Two or three, but. You know, it always seems to, what I always tell people, I, mm -hmm. I say, um, the nice thing about our fudge is you can have, it doesn't require refrigeration, so you can take the lid off, it's got a small spoon, you can have a couple bites, put the mm -hmm. lid back on, and, you know, just store it on your desk, you know, yeah. you don't have to eat it all at once. My problem is I have a hard time getting that lid back on. Once I start, it's one serving. You know, yeah, it's, see, I have it's the same like, problem. Once I start, it's one of those, well, it's not that big of a piece. I get people that are like, well, there's a lot of calories in this. And I, I tell them. Um, there's a lot of flavor in it, too. I, I say, you know, it's a small spoon, so there's yep. hardly any calories. And I say, I that's think right. that's how it works, you know. Yeah. As long as you're eating everything with a small spoon, it's. <laughs> Counting it's one good. at a time, yes. Yep. <laughs> so um, it's, a, it's a great little product. It does have about a four month shelf life. Mm -hmm. We could probably make it five or six months. Mm -hmm. But for us, you know, when you wholesale, you're really, you're letting go control of your product to somebody right. else, you know, and it's kind of up to them how they're, how they're presenting the product and whether mm -hmm. they're letting it stay too long or, and we just worry that we want to make sure that that person that buys that fudge and tries it really enjoys it and it tastes just really fresh. Yeah. So rather than, uh, extend this to the very bitter end you know <laughs> of the fudge we want to make sure that it's it's only good to a certain point and you know if someone buys it on that last day that we say it's good mm -hmm. it's still going to taste really fresh mm -hmm. so um we're careful about that and um i think it's paid off you know good. we get we get a lot of customers a lot of merchants that that repurchase mm -hmm. you know that, right. do you have a favorite flavor you know, when my wife said she was going to make a um, cotton candy fudge, mm -hmm. I was like, you know, that sounds kind of sketchy. <laughs> that just sounds a little sketchy mm -hmm. to me. And um, but it, honestly, it tastes so good. And it she mm -hmm. sprinkles a little sugar on top of it, sugar crystals, and so when you're when you're biting it, it kind of just dissolves mm -hmm. and uh, kind of gives you that. Sensation that of sensation the, of, cotton, yeah. of cotton candy. <laughs> so that's really good, but I really like our coffee bean fudge. I like mm -hmm. coffee in fudge. And that's, that's strange because until I was 50, I hated coffee. I just hated coffee. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I turned 50, and I just mm -hmm. can't get enough of it. I have two or three cups in the morning, and I'll eat coffee so fudge. you're like me. It's what keeps you awake. Yeah. Yeah. Keeps me going. I got to get some of that coffee one. Mm. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe all of a sudden my body's like, hey, coffee has caffeine. <laughs> you, know, you need caffeine right now. You're 50. And that was 10 years ago. I'm oh, 60 man. now. Uh, I, I can't say I have a favorite flavor because it always changes. But when it comes down to it, I'm definitely a mix of caramel, toffee, and chocolate just in general. But, you know, you get that yeah. coffee in there, too. I could see a coffee yeah. toffee would be nice. Yeah. Mm. One of our other really good sellers is a dark chocolate caramel sea salt. And the, the dark chocolate is not real bitter, so mm -hmm. it's more of just a rich chocolate. Yeah. And uh, we sell quite a bit of that. Um, a lot of people will say, well, I don't like dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. But once they try it, How they're How can like, they not like dark chocolate? Well, I, I'm just oh. saying there's some people <laughs> that are focused that, that haven't opened themselves up to... Now, do you think these are the people who thought they had dark chocolate, got into their cupboard and grabbed their mom's or their whoever cook's baking chocolate? <laughs> that could be. That could be. I, I don't know. But their perception mm -hmm. is that it's bitter or really bitter or something. Yeah. And um, they don't get that taste when when they, they really honestly try it. So. Yeah. We, we bought a block of... Uh, baking chocolate for the kids one time. They're like, well, what's the difference? 
It's like, because there's like no sugar in it. Oh, no, it can't be that. It's like, all right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it still sits yep. in the refrigerator. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, one time my wife was experimenting with a flavor and it was this orange color. And she's like, here, try, try a bite. And so being trusting, you've been you know, mm-hmm. married for 30 years. I should know better. Right, right. But being trusting, I, uh, I took a big bite of it. And she had just developed a new recipe for the dogs. And it was a cheese fudge. Mm-hmm. And it was cheese. And I was like, so not, I was expecting like tangerine or, mm-hmm. you know, but no, it, it was cheese. So I've got to say, I'm not a fan of the, the Fido's fudge cheese flavor. <laughs> not really a fan. Not uh, a fan of that one. Cheese so, has its place, but for some reason, you know. Not, not in uh, fudge and definitely yeah. not in something called Fido's fudge. So <laughs> dogs like it though. No, that's but, what matters, right? Yeah, that's what matters. Yeah. So. I have a great big dog outside. I wonder if he'd be, he'd probably eat the whole thing one bite. Do you have a <laughs> is it a mixed breed or is it yeah? A he's a uh, Great Pyrenees Newfoundland mix. Wow. He's this big blue and white blotchy dog who smiles and and he loves you so he leans up against you and makes sure he has his foot on your foot to keep you down right? so you can't move and slobbers on everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a huge dog. Uh, he's he's pretty big. He's about seventy five to eighty pounds. And we thought he was big until uh, we saw him next to an actual um, uh, full, bu- full blood uh, Pyrenees. Wow. Yeah, and those things are yeah. huge. <laughs> those are huge. We've got on Fido's Fudge, um, we actually put our dog, we had an artist draw our dog. And mm-hmm. So our dog is on the, the cover of, of she's, nice. our, she's our mascot. I call <laughs> her my spokes dog. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I even have a little watercolor of her sitting in front of our different products, which are now <laughs> going to be repackaged, but, um, same artwork. Though, right? Yeah. Same yeah. artwork, but we'll have to, I'll have to, uh, maybe have the new pouches redone or something. But, uh, yeah. I, my hidden agenda was mm-hmm. to make my dog famous. You know, I want, Absolutely, I, want her, right? I want her to be out there and yeah. her name's Roxy. And, uh, so she's the face of our Fido's mm-hmm. fudge. So. Fido's fudge. You should put on approved by Roxy. Food by Roxy. I, yeah. Someday I've yeah. always thought I'm going to develop a website for her called Roxy's Report. That's <laughs> that's uh, that's a goal, but she's now 12, so I'm going to have to hurry if I'm yeah. going to do that. Is that going to be more of a, a website? Or you could, if you do a website, it could be you could definitely extend that, but or more of an Instagram. You know, this is Roxy. You know, yeah, I had thought sometime yeah. at one point of uh, attaching some, one of those like go cameras or do like oh, a, live, mm-hmm. like yep. a, a live thing of roxy just going out every once in a while it'd be kind of fun to do Absolutely. i think everyone loves having kind of fun with their dog doing stuff like oh yeah that. yeah so. i just wish i could do it with my cats too but no <laughs> not so much. the camera would just sit there as they were sitting there going it's too heavy we uh <laughs> we we lost our cat this uh, the beginning of the year and uh she was. She lived for twenty six years. Wow. She was an outside cat. Mm-hmm. She started life as an inside cat, and then she, she ate my pumpkin pie. <laughs> and, and she and I had a chat about that, and she became an outside cat. And she complained about that for the next twenty five years, but uh, man, she she was a. <clears throat> she had a great philosophy mm-hmm. on life. She uh, she thought everything smaller than her dies. Mm-hmm. And that's just, you know, you want to make sure that you're bigger than my cat. Because she, <laughs> she was very nice, but if you were smaller than her, man, you were dying. If you were in a 50-yard <laughs> radius of our house. Oh, man. So she was definitely the more of a watchdog for our mm-hmm. house than the dog was. Speaking of watchdogs, I was out at a, at a place today, and I parked, and it was near all this farm equipment. And this one cute black cat comes out. And then another black cat comes out, and then this gray tabby comes out, and then a great fluffy one, and a black fluffy one. Next thing I know, there's like 15 cats, and they're all jumping around. It's like, okay. That's one way of, of yeah. keeping track of things. So before we left, we're like pounding on the on the truck's hood, make sure everybody goes. So is is that called a herd? I mean, what do you... It would be a pride. You, is it a pride? pride it yeah. would be a pride, okay. It yeah, was more cats. herd-like, but it was still a pride. <laughs> okay, I've never really had... Nope. Had need to think about that as nope. uh, you know, you don't normally see. You think of herding cats, you know, they're all being scattered, right? Or not, yeah. not, not collecting around you, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, probably waiting for the pounce because <laughs> they're all going to scatter in their own directions, and some of them will even go up, even if that up is you, <laughs> yep, yep, or into your car's engine, or, mm-hmm. yep. So. so, uh, well, we had probably about 
three black cats sitting in the back of the bed of the truck itself until we came up and they saw us and, you know, spooked. But it's like, what was the fascination with the bed of the truck? Yeah. <laughs> oh, why? You have to be so careful, you know, mm-hmm. you knock on the engine, especially oh, these yeah. days. It gets to be cold. Oh, yeah. You always want to make sure if you got cats around at all, you want to oh, yeah. knock on that engine. With so many around and, and how they were acting, it was like, well, here, it's a nice warm engine we, before we leave. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yep. Uh, so, uh, any other future plans that you'd like to see with, with uh, Nate's? Well, um, we've gotten back on to doing some shows. Mm-hmm. But frankly, you know, one of the, the, the positive things, if there can be positive in the pandemic, you know, with all those shows canceled, mm-hmm. I noticed at the end of the year that my back didn't hurt anymore. And so, <laughs> you know, doing 30 shows mm-hmm. um, out there where you're lugging around hundreds of pounds of of, of uh, tables and tents and, and supplies, goodies equipment, and supplies goodies, yeah. every single week um, has its, you know, not doing that has a definite mm. medical advantage for me. I'm getting older and that's kind of hard to do. So is do. it time to pass the torch to somebody else to relay to all these places? I, I, you know, we're at the point where we're seeing some solid growth. And mm-hmm. matter of fact, today was, we just hired someone today in mm-hmm. our, into our shop. For the first per- first time in a year and a half, we've actually gone the other direction. Instead of cutting down, we've mm-hmm. we've started hiring. And um, if I can get to that point where mm-hmm. we can maybe uh, train someone to do shows for us, mm-hmm. um, that would be great. And if I can get some help with our, you know, even with the shows that we're doing right now over at IU, mm-hmm. um, so that Alyssa and I aren't both working at the same time maybe you know her one right. show with help and so we kind of alternate it mm-hmm. plus it'd be nice if we could see some basketball games right know? we have tickets and it'd be nice <laughs> to actually sit and see the ticket you know the game instead of while you're working having some but, roasted nuts but yeah, yeah. and yeah. uh but as far as growth goes right now we're going to stay you know in our shop for as long as we can mm-hmm. but we're seeing some serious growth and so Good. at some point, we're going to have to see about how do you expand? How do you, have, you know, do we get another building there? Do we mm-hmm. get another building elsewhere? And, right. and try to expand into, and and when we expand, will that change the business model? Are we going to try right. to do something else in addition mm-hmm. to this? You know, we have a lot to think about. Um, and frankly, we've, we've looked around um, over the last couple of months just, toying with the idea of, you know, if we expand, what do we do? Would we buy another building mm-hmm. and just keep this one for, you know, a certain type of manufacturing? Mm-hmm. Or would we move it to another building? You know, if we if we could find, you know, the, uh, I'm really regretting where the, um, <laughs> the um, Amish bakery came in. Mm-hmm. I'm really wishing I'd had the money to buy that because <laughs> that thing is like, five or six times the size of our building. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I keep looking at it going, oh, I could have made a lot of fudge in this <laughs> in this shop. You know, we could have really expanded. But, it, you know, some sometimes your timing is good and sometimes mm-hmm. your timing is off. And trying to deal with just surviving the pandemic, um, you know, trying to keep our business going, you know, it's really hard to say, oh, this is the time we need to spend more money on, mm-hmm. on a shop. You know, it's kind of hard yep. to... To, to do that so we missed out on that building but you know there's other buildings around yeah so we have a lot i think um we have a lot of growth in store for us and i'm i'm really excited about it i mm-hmm. i think uh, this has been the culmination of you know 20 years of work mm-hmm. and always evolving from just doing a you know a um, fundraiser mm-hmm. into starting to do shows then into buying a building and doing a retail and then expanding into wholesale mm-hmm. um and then working online we're trying to develop our website a little bit better that needs a lot of work <laughs> uh, you know it's funny uh sometimes they they joke about how um the guy that owns a shoe store only has two pairs of shoes at home mm-hmm. the guy that the guy that does construction always has projects at home that he doesn't get to and yeah <laughs> and uh, i'm a computer guy i mean i i've worked with computers my whole life in the 70s when i was uh 
just a, a teenager, I I had heard about computers and decided mm -hmm. I wanted to, to learn, you know, how to use computers. So I just, I kind of went over to IU and just sort of helped myself to their mainframe. <laughs> and they, they didn't really know I was there, but mm -hmm. I just sort of, I found a terminal and I figured out how to get logged in and started teaching myself mm -hmm. how to do that. Nice. And so, so I've had this technical background all these years and then you get to our website and I'm like, it's like pulling teeth getting me to, <laughs> to update my own website, which mm -hmm. I should, you know, it should rule, you know, yeah. it should be awesome. But uh, I get, I get into doing so many other things and that's just one thing that we really, we really need to work on is right. our website. So. So yeah. online presence, you know, the pandemic has shown, mm -hmm. you know, our wholesale companies, they closed down for a while or they started buying, buying conservatively. Mm -hmm. Our other half of our business was uh, doing shows and that closed down during the pandemic. So yeah. we were, you know, the only income we were earning for a little while there was the few occasional sales online. Yeah. So it showed how important it is to develop that e-commerce right, right. Um, stream, you know. <laughs> so, so that eventually I'll get to that, but we'll see. Right. Any new, new or unexpected flavors coming up? Something. You know, uh, you might have to ask my wife that. <laughs> she, she's always surprising me with different ideas and different flavors, and um, we'll see. We, we will incorporate more ingredients as best mm -hmm. we can. Like, for example, we have for for several years with. Owen Valley Winery, we mm. incorporate their uh, one of their wines into a dark chocolate berry wine fudge. Mm. Um, so we, we, you know, we try to promote yeah. them when mm -hmm. we can. Over in Bloomington, there's a company called the Olive Leaf, and we use their uh, Cara Cara balsamic oil in a uh, in a Cara Cara orange mm -hmm. uh, fudge. And then we, you know, we'll talk about that company, and and the idea is to to try to help other companies as well you know as we build mm -hmm. unique flavors so we're, we're always looking for that uniqueness yeah. something we it you have to have something that differentiates yourself from the competitor mm -hmm. from the competitors part of that is our packaging but right. the other the other part has to be the creativity the you know like main street coffee with their sandwiches you right. know it's like i have never had that before <laughs> and it tasted absolutely delicious. Yep. And um, I want that same effect with our fudge mm -hmm. that maybe you, you've you never tried something like that before, but once you taste it, it's, you know, right. you can't forget it. And <laughs> that's that's our goal. Excellent. So, uh, Real quick, uh, what's your website? Nate'sCandyJar.com. Okay, Nate'sCandyJar.com. That's, that's uh, it. If anybody's listening out there, go ahead and, uh, and, and take a listen to it or check it out. Order some of their, their fudge. Uh, I'll, yeah. If I can throw one more thing in about Absolutely. that, um, mm -hmm. we also do we do a lot of you know the very first thing we did was a fundraiser. Well, that works out really well, and so one of the revenue streams that we do have is fundraising, and we do a ton of fundraisers. Whether you know it's with travel teams or classes that are getting ready for trips, uh, you know we've we've had classes that go abroad mm -hmm. and they needed to raise money. And they'll do a fundraiser with our fudge. It's a nice revenue split, a 50-50 revenue split. So that's something that, um, you know, if if anyone who's listening has an organization that mm -hmm. needs money, uh, some reason that they need to raise money, we can do really nice fundraisers. And Excellent. that's that's uh, one of the other things I meant to talk about and <laughs> kind of kind of forgot about. Well, well, right now we do have a, a, a Ford. He's in... Arkansas, I believe, um, and he's our regular listener. He just saying hello and glad to see we're online. So, Ford, hello. go ahead and check out uh, uh, Nate'sCandyJar.com. Order check some us of the fudge. Yep. Check us out sometime, and yeah. and uh, I need to update the website, but it's it's up there. So, uh, if you have any questions, you can always give us a call nope. there. So, the whole so you know one of the neat things I know you're probably trying to to. Mm -hmm wrap things up but one of the neat things that happened during the pandemic Indiana, Indiana University had all these kids that were supposed to do internships and during the pandemic all the internships got canceled and so mm -hmm. they they needed to find a way to help these kids make their grade you know yeah. do a project or whatever and so they started 
uh, doing projects for any business in Indiana that needed something done with whether it's social media or whether it was with um, building a website or adding on to your website or mm -hmm. streamlining um, marketing of any kind, they'll do it for free. And so we had a couple of projects done with our website through that process and it was okay. free, but they, so for signing up for our wholesale program, you can go to nacecandyjar.com slash wholesale and you can sign up as a wholesale customer, make purchases, that Excellent. sort of thing. Okay. So that was a nice addition yeah. that Indiana University did for us. And they were, and they may still be doing this, uh, mm -hmm. but basically if you have a company in Indiana, um, you can approach, I think it was called their Hope Project, uh, with the Kelly School of Business at Indiana University. Okay. And they did, um, they helped streamline our fundraising online and um, our wholesale program. So really kind of a nice little... Yeah, I did not know they did that. So yeah. IU is definitely looking out for its community. They are. Uh, so let's all go out there and run to Nate's. Let's run to... Um, Oliver Winery, let's run to Owen Valley Winery, let's run to Main Street, Dragonfly, Juniper, all these other places. Crazy Lady. Crazy Lady. Crazy Lady next door. Penguins, and, yep. And Cycle Works. So many places around here, just in our local area to, to check out. Um, yeah, you're right. It is time to wrap this up, unfortunately, because we have okay. to actually be out of the building in 15 <laughs> minutes. We're going to get kicked out. Yeah. Okay. Normally, we just go until you're ready. So I will go ahead and give you a rain check to when you've got Fido's fudge ready or something else comes up or you just feel like it, reach out okay. to me. We'll come out here and do this again. I do have I do have a project I won't talk mm -hmm. about, but I'll, it'll be a teaser. I do have a really cool project in okay. the works that's going to be about four or five months from now. All There's right. something really cool that's going to happen. So. Okay. I'm I'm so, definitely intrigued. So, so you'll, you'll we'll, have to we'll share talk that about that afterwards. <laughs> okay. So. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, this is uh, Tom Rice. I'm John Simon, and you've been listening to Tangents on Everything and Nothing. Thanks, Ford, for listening, because you're always there. We'll see you next week with an unexpected guest. Music provided by Shane Iver. You can check him out at silvermansound.com.